we are back with finally episode two and what has become a three episode series on refinishing Grammy's dough box. I had a distinct feeling after I finished the first episode that this was going to be a multi-episode situation, but you know, I'm learning. Thank you for coming along on this journey, especially thank you to those who have watched episode one and you're back for episode two for another round of this silliness that is me. I appreciate you more than you will ever know. It has taken me a minute to get back, to get you this second episode going for a plethora of reasons. Part of that was because I decided foolishly that my first YouTube series would take place right before the holidays. So it, you know, I just couldn't get that second episode out to you until now. The other reason is because we have had a new development in our family. And that new development is a swizzle! <laughs> Me and my husband decided that it was finally time to introduce a new fun-loving little dog into our life. She is quite sleepy right now, as you can tell. It is nap time. But I just couldn't help but want to share her with you guys and say hello. Um, she is has taken over my life for the last couple of weeks, just trying to get her acclimated to living in our home. Um, get our old dog mini bar acclimated to having a new little roommate in her life. Um, but we could not be happier to have brought this little nugget into our life. We adopted her from um, Texas Humane Heroes out here in Leander, Texas, um, not very far away from where I'm at here in Austin. They are a great organization um, on the front lines and doing the good work in animal rescue. So without further ado, here is episode two. Hi y'all. So we are back on session three, day three um, of our dough box rehab project, Grammy's dough box. Um, my goal for today is to use some wood filler to fill in some cracks and crevices. Um, the person who rehabbed this dough box before me um, already used some wood filler. Some of it um, chipped out during the sanding process. I'm going to fill those holes. Um, I'm also going to fill some new dings and scratches and see if we can get her back to ship shape. Um, I am also going to go ahead and glue and vise up some of these legs that are loosey-goosey. Um, I'll show you on um, a different video a better up close shot of why we need to do this. It is loose um, and it needs to be fixed. So we're going to glue that. We are going to also test stains and at least put the first coat of stain on um, once we decide what we want to use. I typically am really bad at picking stain. I need to test them to see what it's actually going to look like on the wood to try to envision what the project is going to look like when I'm done with it. Um, before I can make up my mind. I try to make up my mind based on the little picture on the front of the stain, um, but I usually can't make up my mind based off of that. Now, as we talked about previously in a different video, we are gonna be, um, our previous recording for this series, series, episode, whatever it turns out to be, for this episode, um, we are going to test the stains on the underside of the dough box because this is a rehab, not a new build, so I don't have an offshoot cut of something to use. Um, so that being said, let's get started. We are going to be using Minwax Color Changing Wood Filler. This stuff is really fun. It's pink when you start and then when it's dry it transfers over to being like a tannish color so that you can tell um, which is super handy uh it comes in bigger packages than this one however i find that between rehab projects and new build projects my wood filler always dries out so i just buy the smallest most economical it's not like the smallest one because the smallest one is like a dollar cheaper than this one um, this is an 8 ounce. I just typically go with this 8 ounce size because most of my projects don't need more than this um, and inevitably it always dries out in between. It's like 5 bucks so I just buy a new one every time. Um, I know that's not the most like eco whatever. I should probably plan my rehab projects better to be 
more eco-friendly and use up this kind of stuff before I move on to a new build, but I have ADHD. I don't do that. So uh, I do the best I can. Anyway, we are going to use this. We're going to fill in some holes. Um, we are then going to do some glue. Actually, we might do glue first now that I think about it. Um, nope, nope, just kidding. ADHD brain, we are going to do wood filler first in case I need to do wood filler on the inside. And then we're going to flip it over, do wood filler on the outside, and then get it all tied up to be glued. The glue does need to set for a minimum, I think, of like two hours. We're going to be using Tight Bond Ultimate Wood Glue. I'll try to put a link to all of this stuff in the description. Um, uh, this is the glue I use. You will see me use it in this handy dandy um, glue pot thing. You can squeeze it and it will come out the end versus having to tip it all the way upside down to get it out. These are much more, it's called a glue bot fast cap um, bottle. You can get them on Amazon. Again, I'll try to put a link in the description. And then we'll move on to stain. So let's get started with the wood filler. All right, so we got our wood filler here. It is a nice peach salmon-y color. It's also, as you can tell, a little bit moist, if you will, a little shiny. If it has lost its shine, that is a good indicator off the bat that your wood filler is old and dry and probably is not gonna work as well as you would like for it to. But let's go ahead and get started and get a little, little dabby dab of your wood filler. Come on over here to a crevice that needs filling and just kind of smooth it on there like cake icing as best you can. This is not a particularly smooth surface that I'm working with. You can use all edges of your scraper. You can find these scrapers on the same aisle as the wood filler, same aisle as those buckets you get for paint, that kind of thing at the hardware store. There's another crack. I'm just going to go ahead and go in with that wood filler and then after a couple hours when this wood filler dries it's going to turn a nice tan color and we are going to go in with some sandpaper and sand it off i'm just going to like smooth this out here into this crack because the crack i don't want to continue to dry and crack so i'm going to Put in some of this wood filler, hopefully give it a little bit of strength, although I'll be it, I will confess, wood filler does not exactly give a lot of strength to wood. It mostly just covers up imperfections. If I am wrong about that, I am sorry. As I have previously said, I'm not a pro. I'm just a girl in her garage doing some stuff I've been taught by other people, passing on the knowledge filling in the cracks. This is so satisfying to me. I really genuinely love it. Love seeing the cracks and crevices get filled in. And then when you get it all done and all sanded, you start putting your stain or your paint on it and those imperfections just disappear. Mm, that is a sweet spot. So I'm just filling in this crack. I'm going to keep doing this over the rest of this piece probably going to do it on the top and then we will reconvene and I will show you the sanding of it off and then we will move on to doing some gluing and you can actually see already from that kind of still salmony pink color to over here it is already starting to dry out that's part of why when you're doing your wood filler you want to scrape it and get it just as thin as you can so that you have it'll dry faster and you have less of it to sand off when you come back also as we kind of talked about in another video recording um, all of these scratches and scrapes I could go in with wood filler and I could fill in all of that but I just feel like these scratches and these scrapes are kind of like part of a, the history of the piece um, so I'm trying not to cover them up because I do want it to still look rustic. I do want it to still show its age, even though we are going to go in and perfect it a little bit and make it stronger. I still want it to be genuine to the piece that it was when, um, it was built and when it was used, when my Grammy loved it, all of those things. What are you saying to yourself now, Lisa, you said earlier in this video that you were done with the sanding for this project. 
as I said before that, you're never done sanding. If you're gonna do furniture rehab, you are never gonna be done sanding. There is always gonna be something that is gonna pop up and rear its ugly head. If you refinish with paint, you are gonna be sanding until the last coat of poly is on it or wax or whatever you're using. You just have to accept that there are going to be continual stages of sanding. You're not gonna be done until you're literally done. <laughs>
was not working the way I wanted it to, so I raised it up on the legs higher to get a better squeeze. Um, and I also used my husband to help me get the things in place. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to use the sharpest tool that you have in your arsenal, which a lot of times is your spouse. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just gonna clean up the glue now because um, this is just what happens when you do anything with wood glue, it is gonna kind of go everywhere. So just get in there with paper towel and try to clean it up. to dry and we play with stain colors all right so we are going to play with wood stains now while our glue and our wood filler is drying i have four different stains that i want to try out because i like the look of each one of them i think each one of them could be good this is an emotional project for me because it was my grandmother's dough box so I want to do it justice. I don't want, it was, it was a really, really dark stain before. So I want to go with something that is a little bit lighter just to uh, change it up a little bit to be completely honest. But I still want to be respectful to what the original piece looked like. So I don't want to go too far off the beaten path. That being said, this project, as you can see, does have a lot of dark spots still in it in the places that sandpaper just could not reach. Um, so if I go too light, then I'm going to have a bunch of like dark accenty things, scratches and whatnot going on. So it's tricky. It's a tricky one. So we're using Minwax again. Um, we're going to have a couple of darks, a couple of lights, and we're going to see what we like. The first one and the one that I have a distinct feeling I'm probably going to be going with is Espresso. You can see on the camera kind of what that color is. It's a nice dark, a little bit reddish. There is also red mahogany, which is a little bit lighter than espresso, but a little bit more red. We have red oak, which is a little bit more of a natural color. Um, this one is gonna look more like an oak tree color. Um, and then we have gunstock, and I, I love gunstock. It is a really, really red, but pretty light stain. So, I think it's the one that I'm gonna like the color of the best, but might not go with just because I'm nervous about it being too light to go with the already existing kind of dark accents. So let's get started. So one of the things that I have found in my life is the best way for me to work with my brain and the way that it is wired, my ADHD brain, is to use sticky notes. Um, I use them in like all facets of my life because there's a lot going on in my brain at one time and I have a tendency to go through the motions and forget things. Um, when I am testing stain like this, I generally try to go dark to light, left to right. It rhymes, it makes sense. Inevitably, I will get to the end of my swatch testing and completely and utterly forget. Uh, which one was which. So, um, as you can tell, I also already got excited and did one and um, yeah, anyway. I do use um, these foam, cheap foam throwaway um, sponge paint brushes. Good grief, I could not get that out of my brain. Another fun way my brain works. I forget the names of things, even foam brushes. Um, so, use this to apply the stain. Use the paper towel to wipe the stain off as you apply it. Here we go. We're going to start with number two since I got excited and I already did number one without you guys. My bad. 
We need to stir, this is very important. You do not shake stain. If you shake stain, it, I don't know, changes the chemistry or something. This is just what the pros say to do, is to stir it, don't shake it. There's usually some crud on the bottom that's actually part of the stain that you need to get back into the fold. Um, so there we go, do to do, do. Get our little foam brush. It's gonna drip. There's only so much you can do to keep your shit protected. This is, oh, number two. Number two is red mahogany. This is another stain that I do genuinely like. Look at that color swatch. That looks much more professional than the other one. Da, 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 da. And then we're gonna wipe that off. Just wipes off the excess. And as you can already see, that is a, a little bit more of a red color than the espresso. So if we end up going with a dark one like it originally was, um, that might be a good that might be a contender. I like that one. What to do? I just kind of keep my little trash pile over here. Should probably have a trash can closer to where I'm working. You know, one thing at a time. I'm gonna move on to number three. Number three is red oak. Um, to be completely honest with you guys, I like all of these stains. That's the problem. That's why I have to do these color swatches because I genuinely like every single one of them. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to do a little test over here. And when I do my tests, I use a new paper towel every time so we're not mixing colors together. And you can tell there's a little bit of stain that comes off, so I don't know, in my mind it helps. Maybe it doesn't, but that's what I was taught to do way back in the day. Now this is <laughs> the one-off gamble that I'm not 100% sure. This is the one that I feel like is least likely to make the cut, um, but it's a stain that I really love. It's called Gunstock by Minwax. It was a very red, um, much lighter stain color. It always throws me off because it is such a light brown color every time I go to use it. I feel like it could be really, really pretty, y'all. Really, really pretty. So we're going to give it a go. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is so pretty. That might be the winner, y'all. It really might. There's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stain. And I feel like it changes it up just enough from what it was before. So there are our color swatches. We're gonna let them dry a little bit. I think I'm gonna apply the, oh, sorry, espresso one more time just to give it a better um, color swatch story. Get it to kind of, align with the rest of them if you will since i did it with a paper towel it just looks so like my niece or nephew did it anyway i'm gonna let these dry and then come back later and see who wins okay y'all it is wrapping up to the end of the day today um as per usual Again, with the way my brain works, I did not accomplish as much as I wanted to today. That's fine, extenuating circumstances. I'm not worried about it. Um, but I did test my stain colors. They're gonna sit overnight, and then tomorrow we're gonna come in, we're gonna sand off the wood filler, and then we're gonna stain this beautiful baby. But I did something I'm very excited about with the stains. I can't wait to So here are my stain swatches. Now, I decided I really like three and four, which number three was red oak. Number four was gunstock. I really love the shade of gunstock. I think it's really pretty. However, for an antique piece of furniture, most antique wooden pieces were a darker color. So the other three seem to be more in line with what it looked like before and a little bit more classic, a little bit more authentic. Um, I don't like one and two. That was espresso and, um, 
red mahogany for this particular piece. They're really dark. They're really similar to what she looked like before. Um, so, brain, brain, brain. I narrowed out those two, but I'm still kind of, I was still kind of stuck between red oak and gunstock. Um, gunstock is just so pretty, but it's not really as authentic of a color. So what I did was I mixed the two and I really like the way this is looking. What this is, is gunstock on the bottom. I let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I put a coat of red oak on the top and then let that sit for just like a minute and a half to two minutes. And then I wiped it off and that was the color that came out of the union of those two. And I really like it. I think it's gonna be light, but still authentic looking. It's got some red. If I want it to be a little bit darker and a little bit less red, I can leave the red oak on it longer because I only let it sit for like a minute and a half to two minutes before I wiped it off. So I could let it sit like 10 or 15 minutes and it's gonna be a darker, more penetrative color. Um, but I'm really, really, really excited about it. So that's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow over this whole baby. Hi y'all, we are back in the workshop today after um, having put in our wood filler and our glue, getting this all shored up. So I'm gonna give you a little look-see what we're working with here. We've got all this wood filler that needs to be sanded off. We're gonna start working on that. And then we are gonna be, um, most of the glue has actually dried. Um, so it looks pretty good. Yep, can't really even see it. So these legs should not be wobbly anymore. I did play with the stains yesterday. Decided I am gonna mix two of the stains together to come up with that color, which isn't focusing very well in this kind of shadowy corner, but I think you're gonna like it. Anyway, here we go. Just taking off the vibes here, I'll loosen it up. some sandpaper and get going on taking off some of this wood filler oh duh I just took the straps off and I need to show y'all like whether or not our glue was successful and it looks like look at that no movement whatsoever the table itself is shaking but this leg is firmly in place same with that one and same with this one Ooh! All right, so I've got some 240 sandpaper here. You don't need a super um, hard grit of sandpaper to do sand off this wood filler. Typically, I'll end up using whatever I used as my finishing sandpaper on the piece itself. Um, so let me show you this stuff really just comes right off and you're left. with just the filler that you needed for that particular spot. Let's see if we can get a more satisfying area. As you can see, that stuff is just coming right off like butter. And then we've got a nice fill in the cracks and the crevasses or crevices as some people probably say look at that ain't no crevasse no more <laughs> nice and smooth really got butter this is a really really satisfying process all right cue the time lapse now you may be asking yourself why doesn't she just use a hand sander like holder tool thing 
Honestly, because I forgot I had one. Um, it happens. I have one now. It will be more efficient. Here we go. In true Adam Savage fashion, I did a thing. There will always be unforeseen circumstances is kind of the thing that Adam always says. Um, shit will happen. That's not a direct quote. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, a couple of things. We're gonna work on stain. Um, I did actually already stain the inside of the dough box. I went ahead and did that off camera because it was going to be a weird angle um, and not very easy to see anyway. And um, I also got some stain on the lid of the dough box. But when I went to lift said dough box, I had a little bit of stain on my gloves. Um, tried to clean them off as best I could. Didn't want to mess with the stain on the inside. So I, when I lifted and flipped the dough box, I caught the leg um, that was the loosest and the reason uh, for gluing the legs in the first place. And um, as a testament to the True Bond glue, it wasn't the glue that broke, it was the wood. <laughs> wood ripped. So, I have had to revise um, the glue itself, and uh, are the legs. I have had to revise the legs and reapply a little bit of glue. I will go ahead and show you. Just a titch. Just getting that in there. Um, you know, it is what it is. You can't foresee every circumstance that is going to come up when you work on a project. And absolutely true is the idea that um you just gotta roll with the punches and you just gotta like continue to do and work and improve because you're never gonna be perfect um you're never gonna have a perfect project every project is gonna have something about it um that does not go your way so all that being said we are gonna work on stain now and try not to be really, really irritated. I did reread the True Bond instructions, um, and they said that the glue is set after 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 30 minutes, um, and then we'll remove the straps and leave her in the position that she is in, um, so the legs won't get moved, and we'll leave her like this for the rest of the evening. Um, but yeah, I just I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys because it is one of my favorite things I heard on Tested with Adam Savage, um, heard him say, is that not every project is going to be perfect. There are going to be imperfections um, that you cannot foresee and that you will have to learn to live with because that is the nature of creating anything. So here we go, stain time. So as we stated yesterday, we are using Minwax wood finish penetrating stain in gunstock and in red oak. We are gonna be using gunstock as our primary stain and then coming in with the red wood to deepen the color. I have already done that. I really, really like the way it turned out and I am excited, excited, excited for you to see it. Now, I did reread the Minwax um, stain instructions as well. Um, and was reminded that the correct way to apply stain um, is to apply the stain and let it set for 15 minutes. So, let it set for 15 minutes, then come back and wipe it off. This is where, don't you just love, like I love being in the generation that has smart home devices that I can say things like, okay, whomever, um, set a timer for 15 minutes. That way I don't have to remember to set the timer because let me tell you, I would not remember. 
Anyway, here we go. Red stain. I'm so excited. And I just can't. I know, I know, I like this stain. Oh, look at her. She's so pretty, this stain. You might also notice I have put down some butcher paper. I just get big rolls of butcher paper off Amazon. Um, comes in super duper handy to have in your shop, just with any old project, um, so that you can protect your surfaces especially since a lot of our surfaces um, here at Your Hippie Sister Design Co. are dual purpose, like this happens to actually be a table saw table. Sometimes when I work on things like this, I like to think about where the story of this piece has come from. Like, I like to imagine with these old vintage pieces what their life was before they came to me, before they made it to me, this particular piece. Like I know my grandmother was not the original owner of this piece. So like, I like to think about like, it, it does feel genuinely old when I work with it. When I look at this wood, when I look at the dovetails, just the detailing of it, I feel like it's old. I don't know that for a fact. So don't come for me in the comments but I feel like it is. And so in my mind, I like to imagine this like Texas or Louisiana for that matter, because my grandmother did live in Louise. She was actually born and raised in Louisiana from what I remember. Um, and so yeah, it could have been Louisiana. But anyway, I like to imagine this like farm couple and like there was like a, a wife or a spouse who stayed inside and did all the inside work, you know, all the domestic goddess shit. And she needed a box, you know, that would like double as a kitchen island because it is about waist high, like a countertop. Um, and so her husband built her this beautiful dough box for her to do her domestic goddess shit and bake her bread. I don't know. That's what I like to think about when I do things like this. It's fun for me. Is that a true story? Probably not, but it could be. It's old enough. And for those skeptics out there who say, well, Lisa, look at those legs. Those legs were machined. Those weren't hand carved. They're too precise. They're not exactly the same though. And for those people, it is good to know that um, wood lathes, as in a lathe where a piece of wood can be turned repetitively in a circle and carved that way, were actually in use in the time of the Egyptians. So it could be old and still have these beautifully carved machine looking legs. Anyway, I am going to continue on with our stain process. Cue another time lapse. Let's do the time lapse again. tidbit unexpected circumstance they happen I know um, one of the mistakes I made I'll show you over here oh, look at that beautiful stain that beautiful stain is not the mistake the mistake is that I started with the top Ugh. I do this I do this sometimes I started with the top because I was all excited and ready to like get it going. 
Um, not thinking about the fact that to do the underside, I was gonna have to flip it over. And the so the lesson here is that you should start with the side you care least about and then move on to the side that you care most about because if, if I flip this over, the stain is gonna get messed up if I just put it on top of the paper on the table um, because it's not dried. Now, and it takes hours and hours and hours to dry. Now, I do have some little like 3D printed triangle holder things. It's not the right word, it's not a triangle. It's a whatever, you know, pyramid thing. Anyway, that I can use to get this. I use it when I paint to get it up off the table. Um, hold please. So yeah, so I use those little pyramids um, to get it up off the table when I paint. My concern is the point of those little pyramids do tend to leave a mark no matter what I do. So I'm worried that they're gonna mark the top. So inevitably what I'm gonna end up doing is leaving this for now and then staining the underside of the lid tomorrow and letting that dry before I move on to covering it with its top coat. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lesson learned I thought I would pass down to you. Now you would think after I have done this, dozens of times that I would know by now to start with the side that I don't care about, but I get excited. What can I say? I also need to learn to look at you, not at myself. Anyway, I get excited. What can I say? Um, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> anyway, we're moving on to wiping the stain off. Now we're almost done with the body of the dough box and I'm so excited. All right, y'all, we got our stain on. It's looking so good. I'm so obsessed with this color. Um, but I've got a dash because I'm supposed to be at a crafty ladies night with my friends and I'm running late because it's what I do. Time management is my horcrux. Horcrux? Is that? I don't know. It's my curse. It's whatever. Um, but look at her. Look at how beautiful she is. I'm so excited. So excited. The stain is perfect. That will conclude episode two. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode about wood filler and stain. And um, I really loved the way the stain turned out on this project. Next episode is gonna be about applying your finishing coat, which in this situation, um, I decided to opt with a polyurethane based top coat. Um, you will find out more about that in episode three. If you enjoyed this content, if you are along for this shenanigan of a shop ride, um, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification button so you know when I update new content. Um, thank you all for watching generally from the bottom of my heart.